this afternoon, as part of CBS's series, The Dish, we meet a man on a mission to bring a more authentic taste of Mexico to the U.S. Dario Wallos was born in the U.S. but raised in Monterrey, Mexico. His goal is to introduce our taste buds to real Mexican tacos, while surrounding us with everything he loves about the culture of where he grew up. The result is Tacombi, a series of taquerias in New York, Miami, and the Washington, D.C. area, with plans to open dozens more from coast to coast. Uh, it's nice to be back in here. Yeah, it feels yeah. okay. Yeah. There's a good reason this old VW bus is parked in the middle of a New York City restaurant. So the tacos would come over the top to people here? Yep. We'd press the tortillas right here, and then we'd put them on the griddle. The bus used to be the restaurant. Right. Cut open the combi. I basically cut the roof off it, right, so I could peel it back so you could stand up inside. But so you cut it with what, like a metal saw or shears or what? You know, those circular metal saws. I uh, just got on top of the bus and just cut right through it. <laughs> so you only get one shot at that. <laughs> you, you, you do, you get one shot. Puro pico de gallo. Dario Woolos has turned that shot into a gathering empire of taquerias, making Tacombi one of the fastest growing restaurants in America all with a mission of sharing Mexican food and culture. And it started when he was just another 20-something working for an internet startup, looking for the comforts of home. There was a taqueria in Boston, and I remember I would go to it, and it, it, just, it wasn't hitting that spot. Uh, then, then this company asked me to, to open up the London office, and, and I go over there, and, and there was no Mexican food in London. I, I started talking about it a lot with my friends. One of them said, Darío, you should you should start your business here in Mexico. He's like, you, you, you don't know what you're doing. You've been talking about maybe opening it up in London, and maybe it's better you lose all your money here. And I was <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> the name Tacombi is a mashup of the words taco and combi, meaning bus. It brought together these two things that are common all over Mexico, ubiquitous. Every person in Mexico has at some point ridden in a combi, you know, a VW bus. A VW bus, yeah. And, and tacos, you know, every street corner city of Mexico has awesome tacos. With the office life behind him, he parked his first Tacombi outside a nightclub in Playa del Carmen. And when travel to Mexico slowed in 2009, he moved his bus to New York City. I can take credit for starting Tacombi, but I can't take credit for what it is today. He now has 15 restaurants open in five cities and hopes to take Tacombi to the rest of America and the world. There's just so much positive intention that goes into delivering a taco. It's so simple, but, but there's just so much behind it. As we learned when we stepped behind the counter with Oscar Hernandez, Dario's first hire at Tacombi and now the company's master taquero. This is like uh, one of the one of our most popular tacos in Tacombi. Hernandez showed us the Tacombi version of the famous Baja fish taco. We use a Atlantic cut. It's a uh, flaky, but it doesn't break when you fry it. And then we also uh, dip it in uh, beer butter. The batter is made from Mexican beer. And when it comes out of the fryer, it's a little tangy, spicy. It's topped with a sauce made from Mexican chilies. And to keep it crispy, not salsa, but pickled veggies. It's part of my daily diet. Mm. 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 Yes, that's a perfect description. Wow, so when good. They, when people ask you, like, how's that taco? And you say that, mm. Mm, 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 mm. that's it. How do people screw this up? Something that I will definitely not recommend is go to the supermarket and pick up one of those bags that says Mexican cheese blend and add it to this taco. I mean, they're definitely... Why, why? What's wrong with the Mexican cheese blend? Uh, the Mexican cheese blend that I normally find on the supermarkets, I don't know what part of Mexico is that coming from. <laughs> How much experimentation went into this as I take the last delicious bite? Well, there's been many, many thousands of, yeah. of tries at this. One of the things that we've learned over the years is how important the tortilla is. So important, in fact, that when he couldn't find the quality of tortilla he was looking for in New York, he started making his own. So no one's ever called you the Willy Wonka of corn? Not yet, you're the first. Okay. Inside a shiny new factory along the Brooklyn waterfront, he showed us the process of turning bags of corn 
into bags of corn tortillas. We're making 150,000 tortillas a day. 150,000? Yeah. And you can see when they come out, some of them, see how they, they fluff? Yeah. Right? And that's what makes a really good tortilla. You know what I love, actually? There's like little imperfections, right? Everyone is a little different, just like if you're making it in a home kitchen. Totally. Pick your, pick your tortilla. I love it. So. Oh. A lot of people in Mexico, when you get tortillas on the table, yeah. you roll it up and you'll dip it in your soup. Uh, or yeah. you're, you're kind of like the way uh, Americans eat bread, right? Mm. His Vista Hermosa chips and tortillas now ship out to grocery stores nationwide. And Shake Shack founder Danny Meyer has invested millions in a plan to eventually build Tacombe restaurants all across America. But Wolo says success for him is defined by more than just sales. You've been doing this for how many years now? Tacombe overall is overall. 17 years now. And it came from a place of love. You still love it? Yeah, totally, totally. It, it, it takes me back to growing up in Mexico. Uh, it takes me to, back to where I started Tacombe. When I, when I was in Playa del Carmen, I used to go buy my tortillas at a local tortilleria. And, you know, you step into these tortillerias, and just like we did now, you have that smell yeah. of the fresh corn being ground and then cooked. It's, it's pretty special. So you're thousands of miles away from home, but in another way closer than ever. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, well, who else is super hungry right now? <laughs> okay, no, just me. Back to Florida now, where Pride is now in the spotlight as Cape Corral begins its celebration amidst the ongoing push for anti-drag shows in the southern state. Pride Cape Coral is a tradition that started in 2019 as a way for people of all identities to come together and feel accepted while doing so. This came after studies showed that Cape Coral ranked low in diversity and acceptance, according to organizers of Pride Cape Coral. Definitely welcoming. Like, you don't have to worry about being judged all the time, which is nice, and it's, yeah, it's sweet. I'm a highly supporting fan of trans rights, gay rights, so, and I think it's a beautiful thing that we can express our love and our feelings here, you know, in 2023 now we come to this. Just Thursday, a state senator filed what he called the Protection of Children Bill, which calls for hotels or restaurants to lose licenses if they admit a child to an adult live performance. Critics fear the bill will target drag shows. To do my makeup? Yeah. 30 minutes. No way. Oh, yeah, I don't waste time. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I've been doing it 19 years, so. This is Andrew Spaulding. He's been a drag performer for 19 years. He says the shows this weekend are family friendly. We're intelligent entertainers. We know how to perform the correct and appropriate thing for the audience. So, um, like I said, like, I equate it like a comedian. But Governor Ron DeSantis calls drag shows inappropriate for kids. And so does Florida Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo. I almost liken it to child abuse, frankly. So, what do we do? We ban kids from going to see uh, X-rated movies. N nobody has ever complained about that. We would like to thank every one of our guests for coming in today. Brenda and Gina from Brenda Bay Bridal and Ranger from Serial Spot. Now it's time for a pop culture quiz. Our producer James will be asking me questions and you the viewers can play along. You can yell out at the screen or you can tweet me. Hey James. You ready? We got some topical ones today. Okay. With it being a uh, serial day. First one, how many charms debuted in the original Lucky Charms? Four. Yeah, that was pretty good. Bonus points if you could name them. I could never okay. name Heart them. Heart Star, Clover, Moon. And before there was a rabbit, the trick's mascot was which animal? There was someone before the silly rabbit? Turns out, yes. <laughs> it was a flamingo. Oh, that's cool. I don't he think didn't play enough else. tricks, though, so they had to change them. Yeah, they're pretty. They just stand and there, one leg. Moving in to our wedding week, uh, which city is the most popular wedding destination? Las Vegas. That was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, you nailed that one. Well, yeah, you know. Year? It's like... I don't know. Don't they do... Isn't there, like, a day where, like, everyone goes and gets married? Yeah, there's, like, 112,000, I think, a year in Vegas. Wow. Get and married. then, to bring it all together, if you wanted to throw rice and cereal at a wedding, what would you throw? What? If you wanted to throw rice and cereal at a wedding, what would you throw? 
I do not know. Rice Krispie. Oh, well, duh. Rice Krispies, we there you go. <laughs> okay, if you guys got that, I'm still asleep, okay? <laughs> Daytime Buffalo will be back tomorrow afternoon at 3 over on our sister station, CW23. As always, you can head to our website, daytimebuffalo.com.